You've heard of Orpheus, the greatest musician of all time, and his bride Eurydice. His was the unluckiest of wedding days. Orpheus and Eurydice, Ovid 88. His grief is limitless, inconsolable, desperate. He left the warmth the sweetness of our air. He dared to the sense of the river Styx and he crossed to the underworld. Through that dim domain, with all its shimmering, merry ghosts, he passed. Until he arrived at his melancholy heart found his king. He knelt before him, drowning. I don't know what power love has down here, but I've heard that he has some. If that is true, then listen to me. I've tried to master this grief and I can't. I understand the all coming in the end. My bride, Eurydice, will soon enough be your citizen in the right ones of her years. I'm asking for a loan, not a gift. If you deny me, one thing is certain. I want you to keep me here as well. As Orpheus spoke, the pale phantom began to weep. Tantalus was no longer thirsty and Sisyphus sat on his rock to listen. Orpheus, turn around. Eurydice. Your song has moved us, Orpheus, and may have her on one condition. As you ascend and leave this place, she will not walk beside you, but she will be following. You must not, until you reach our gate, to turn around to look at her. If you look at her before the sunlight, she is ours, forever. I understand. Hermes will accompany you. Remember, hesitation or doubt, and our gift must be returned. A simple enough condition. It ought to have been. The singer led the way, ascending the sloping path through the murk. A long way they traveled, almost all the way. But you know what happened? Concerned for her, we're not going to believe in us in a cruel delusion, a dream, or a mirage. He turned. Farewell. That was his last sight of her, but he saw it again and again. Farewell. Is this a story of how time can only move in one direction? Farewell. Is this a story of an artist and the sudden loss that comes from self-consciousness or impatience? Farewell. Farewell. He said to himself, they had to be behind them. He said it out loud and heard it fade away. They had to be behind them. But their steps were ominously soft. If only he could turn around just once. But to turn around ruined his entire work, so near completion. Then he could not fail to see them, those other two following him so softly. The god of speed and distant messages, a golden crown held above his shining eyes, a slender staff held out before him, and little wings fluttering at his ankles. And on his left arm, barely touching it, she.
a woman so loved that from one liar there came more lament than from all lamenting women, that a world of lament arose in which all nature reappeared. Forest and valley, road and village, field and stream and animal, and that around this lament world, even as around the other earth, a sun revolved, a silent star filled heaven, a lament heaven, with its own disfigured stars. So greatly she was loved. But now, she walked behind the graceful God, her steps constricted by trailing grave clothes, uncertain, gentle, and without impatience. She was filled with her vast death, like a woman heavy with a child. She could not see the man in front of her, or the path ascending steeply into life, deep within herself. Being dead filled her beyond fulfillment, like a fruit suffused with its own mystery and sweetness. She was so filled with her vast death, which was so new, she could not understand it had happened. She had come into a new virginity and was untouchable. Her sex had clothes like a young flower at nightfall, and her hands had grown so unused to things that even the gods' infinitely gentle touch hurt her, like an undesired kiss. She was no longer that woman with brown eyes who had once echoed through the poet's songs. No longer why helps it in the island. That man's property no longer. She was already loosened like long hair, torn out like falling rain, shared like a limitless supply. And when abruptly, the god put out his hand to stop her saying it saw in his voice. He was turned around. She could not understand and sought the answer. Who? Far away, dark before the shining exit gates, someone or other stood whose features were unrecognizable. <coughs> he stood there and saw how, on the strip of road among the meadows, with a mournful look, the god of the message deciding and turned to follow the small figure, already walking back along the path. Her steps constricted by the trailing grave clothes, uncertain, gentle, and without impatience. 